So my name is Dr. Tricia Stadnik. I am a uh, university professor at the University of Calgary and a Canada Research Chair in Hydrologic Modeling. Uh, and I specifically look at the impacts of climate change on our water system and water supply. If we start on calendar year, then anything that happens in January, December, January, February, um, and March, anything that falls as rain actually falls as snow. <laughs> and so then when the temperature starts to warm and that snow starts to melt, then we have a very disconnected uh, system from uh, snow melt to runoff in terms of when that snow actually fell. We typically have a wet season between May and June. That's when the majority of our rainfall happens. Uh, and then we get rainfall runoff that happens actually pretty quick because of the steep slopes. And that's something that's very different from the lower part of the Bow River watershed that's very flat. And then as we transition into July, August, September, uh, then we tend to get a little bit drier. Sometimes we actually have drought conditions where we see very little rainfall. And that's normal. The plants on the surface, as they don't have any water, the roots will uh, start to, to close the plants off and then the plants will start to, to die. Uh, but your grass is actually meant to go through that seasonal cycle too. And, and they're better off if you just let them go to sleep for a little bit when there's no water. Um, and then as we get into the fall, sometimes we can actually get more rain again. And part of that has to do with the difference in temperature between the upper atmosphere and the land surface itself. There's a massive amount of water that increase, that has gone from the surface into the air from evaporation on the landscape. Uh, and then that forms clouds and then increases more rainfall uh, to happen. But that all depends on how dry the conditions have been over the summer. And then we start the whole process over again. How we monitor our changes in water is usually through streamflow hydrometrics. And they measure the amount of water passing through a single point in time. Uh, and we actually do that in Canada on a continual basis, and that data is all made publicly available. We also have series of um, precipitation monitoring networks, so rainfall um, and some snow stations. And those are very, very fancy. They're, uh, if you're ever hiking in the mountains and you see a concrete pad, don't step on it. It's called a snow pillow. <laughs> it measures the weight of the snow on top, and so we can monitor the snow packs in the mountains. And so between all of those, then we can actually track how the change in the distribution and amount of rainfall, snow melt, and then the resulting runoff or stream flow is occurring. Um, here in Alberta is one of the only places that we see a distinct decrease in runoff and stream flow uh, in the future periods. And part of that has to do with the extreme increase in temperature and the landscape around us that doesn't tend to store a lot of water, it evaporates a lot of water. And so as the temperatures get warmer, uh, then that encourages more water to be lost from the surface as evaporation and go back up into the clouds and form rain, but it forms rain somewhere else. One of the things that we have witnessed is that stream flow is actually increasing and flood risk tends to increase too. The stream flow is increasing because the temperatures are getting hotter and the glaciers are melting faster. But that's a finite resource. Once the ice is gone, then the stream flow won't be sustained. Within the models that we look at, that's, that's a very short period of time. And by 2030, some of the glaciers in the headwaters of the Bow River Basin will actually be entirely gone, is what they're projecting. As the atmosphere heats up, as the, the clouds heat up, they can actually hold more water. And so what ends up happening is that when we do get moisture, there's a lot more moisture up in those clouds and they dump all of that moisture out in a very intense high energy event because of this um, much warmer temperature that's occurring. So generally speaking, the biggest risk that we have here is drought. From a drought perspective, the biggest risk is to agriculture and to the livelihoods of those that rely on farming um, on the downstream side. We've already seen here in this very province, uh, irrigation be cut off on a near annual basis since 2005. If we look at global climate change, uh, the temperatures are rising faster as we move further north around the world, and so the Arctic. So the first thing is to acknowledge what's happening with climate change uh, here in the Bow River system and in Alberta. Alberta is actually one of the hotspots of climate change around the world. In terms of limiting our impacts for climate change, there's lots of everyday things that people can do. Very simply, um, thinking about using what's in our watershed that's given to us at any point in seasons, all of that has an impact and it does add up, right? The habits that you learn as a young person, you then pass on and carry through your life and that has a cumulative impact as well.